Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with you for another sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. Our new release this week is There I Find Hope. It's book six in Jesse Gusman's Strawberry Sands Beach Sweet Romance series. And I've got more about this absolutely fantastic book and a live preview reading for you in just a bit. But first, as you all well know, Jesse has been including recipes within the course of her stories lately, and I've been making them for you here. We're going to do that again in another segment we like to call Cooking with Jay. Okay, now this is absolutely spoiler free, so uh, the, the recipe itself doesn't really play any major role in the story, so don't worry about that. But what we're making today, or the recipe that's in the book, is onion soup bread. It is, well, in the story, Griff, who now co-owns the diner with his wife, Chai, has been throughout this series making unique dishes to draw in customers and help the diner. And this time he's found a recipe for bread. And it's so good, people are actually ordering it as a meal. And we're going to make that. But here's the thing. This is so simple. It is five ingredients. And it literally takes just minutes to prep and get into the oven. So I felt almost a little bad at just doing that. Well, fortunately, Jesse, or Griff, has come up with a special cheesy butter to go along with this bread. And I actually figured maybe that's not going to be so hard to make. So I did a little research, couldn't really find a recipe for cheesy butter uh, that I liked, but I did kind of take an amalgamation of, of several and figured, you know what, let's just wing it. So without further ado, let's get started making onion soup bread and cheesy garlic butter. Okay, so first, we're going to start with the bonus recipe because it's going to need a little time in the fridge before we make our bread. You need one stick of room temperature butter. It is absolutely critical that it's got to be room temperature. It's got to be nice and soft so you can work with it. I'm adding two tablespoons of chives, very finely chopped. You need one or two cloves of garlic, depending on how much you like garlic flavor. And what I did here, because again, we're going to be blending this in the butter, I actually grated it on a microplaner, you know, the really, really fine grate that you can do. You need one quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika and one quarter cup of fine shredded cheddar cheese. If you like, you can add a teaspoon of parsley. And then to make it, the instructions really couldn't be easier. Put it all in a bowl and mix it together until everything is thoroughly blended. Uh, I tried to start out with a whisk. Uh, that was a mistake. I then tried a spatula, which worked better, but I wound up using just a fork. Uh, that was by far the easiest thing, but you just want to mix and mix and mix until everything is combined evenly and spread out. Then you can do one of two things. You can either put it in a small container, or you can put down a sheet of plastic wrap or waxed paper, put the mixture onto that. Then, as I'm going to do here, you fold the plastic wrap over it and roll it into a log. Just roll it nice and smooth, get it the size you want. And then either you place your container or your log into the refrigerator for an hour or two until it's firm. Then we can start our onion soup bread. For this, again, it's only five ingredients, and they are three and one-third cups of flour, 
two packets of onion soup mix. You need half a teaspoon of baking soda, two cups of buttermilk, and one cup of freshly shredded cheddar cheese, plus some leftover to top your bread with. All right, step number one, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and grease up a bread pan. To a nice big bowl, you're going to add your flour, your soup mix, and your baking soda. Now, personally, I like to go ahead and, and whisk this around pretty well to get it nice and blended throughout. Then you're going to add your buttermilk, and you're going to mix that well. You can start off with a spoon, but eventually, folks, you're just going to have to get your hands in there and start mixing it up, kneading it around. It actually helps get it a little bit lighter. Now, look, this is going to be a pretty dense bread because it doesn't have any yeast in it. But uh, working with it does make it a little bit lighter. And by the way, I did say it was easy. I didn't say it was not messy. Moving on. You then add in your cheddar cheese. And once you get that worked into a dough really well, you put that into your greased loaf pan. Top it with more cheddar cheese as you desire. Bake for 50 to 60 minutes until it's nice golden brown and done. That is all there is to it. Give it a second to cool before you take it out of the pan, then cut you a slice, top it with that wonderful cheesy garlic butter that you've made, and serve it up however you like. A bowl of soup is just perfect to go with it. And there you go. It could not be easier to make either onion soup bread or the cheesy garlic butter. And even though it's a little messy, I do hope you guys will try it. It is savory, it's cheesy, and with that butter, oh. And by the way, if you're having something like tomato soup, a pat of that butter in the tomato soup will really plus it up. It's also great on things like steamed vegetables. And I'm sure you'll find dozens of other uses for it as well. Regardless, however you try it, if you do try those two recipes, I hope you'll let me know how it goes down in the comments. Okay, let's talk a little bit about There I Find Hope. There I Find Hope is the story of Sunday Landry. She has been back in Strawberry Sands with her child after her divorce. She's been there about three years. She's opened a candy store. But our story opens with Sunday having suffered the most unimaginable, most painful loss, the loss of her child. She's fallen into grief and despair and She's closed her candy shop. She's moved back in with her mom and has trouble even getting out of bed. It's also the story of Noah Sterner. Back in high school, Sunday and Noah were good friends, but Noah had a crush on Sunday, which she didn't return. And eventually she met and married someone else and moved away. Noah went off to college and they never reconnected, but Noah never really got over Sunday. Now he's back in Strawberry Sands. Of course, Sunday doesn't notice him, understandably, but he wants to do something to help her overcome her grief. So he begins writing her anonymously. It turns out these anonymous letters really help Sunday, and she's able to pour her grief out to her anonymous pen pal, and it's beginning to help her heal. When an opportunity arises for Noah and Sunday to very literally save a life, 
can they use that opportunity to help Sunday find a new normal and find happiness and maybe even love? Of course, you know you've got to come back this Friday to find out. But for now, here is one of the opening scenes from There I Find Hope. I hope you enjoy it. And then you'll come back this Friday for the full release here on Say With Jay. Noah stood uncomfortably at the back of the church. He really didn't belong here. Except he was a resident of Strawberry Sands and had gone to school with Sunday Landry. He had a huge crush on her, too. At one point, they'd been good friends. He had hoped for more, but she'd been swept off her feet by the man she eventually married when they were seniors in high school and he'd come to do a presentation about careers. Noah wasn't sure of the details, because once Sunday had met Glenn, she hadn't had much time for him. And that was understandable. He had more than one friend who had fallen in love and had neglected their regular friends for a while, until the newness of their infatuation wore off. But Sunday had married and moved away, and Noah had gone off to college, and they had never reconnected. Even though she rented her candy store from his company, which owned the building. He didn't think she knew that. It wasn't common knowledge in town. He didn't go around announcing to everyone that his business had been successful, or that he'd come back to Strawberry Sands and invested in the town he loved and grew up in. He'd been biding his time since Sunday moved back. Several large projects had taken his time in Chicago. One, a hotel just north of Strawberry Sands, had just been approved, and they were breaking ground on it soon. But this, he couldn't even fathom the pain she must be going through now. Because he cared for her, high school was a long time ago, but he supposed he was the kind of man who was friends forever. He wanted to do something, anything, to help her but he didn't know what. So he just showed up at the funeral. His heart aching, his soul longing to help, his hands itching to do something. But all he could do was stand in the back, awkward, nodding to the people he knew, which was almost everyone, and wondering if Sunday really wanted him to come up and give his condolences or if she'd prefer not to have to interact with almost strangers. He decided that he would simply go to the casket, stand respectfully in front of it for a few moments, and then walk out, not adding to the line of greeters and hence the amount of time Sunday had to spend on her feet. Seeing him might dig up memories she would rather keep buried. Not that they had any bad blood between them. It was just... He was around when she decided to run off with Glenn, which had obviously not worked out well for her. As Noah stopped in front of the casket, he glanced over and narrowed his eyes. The man standing in front of her now, holding tightly to the hand of a slender blonde woman, who gripped the hand of a young child, looked a lot like an older version of what he remembered Glenn to look like. The man spoke to Sunday, whose grief-laden face suddenly looked stricken, like the man had stabbed her in the heart. Noah's jaw tightened, but if that was Glenn, Noah knew divorces could be nasty, and perhaps Sunday was still in love with him. Obviously, he had moved on. Noah turned his face back toward the casket, not really wanting to look at the lifeless little boy the one he'd seen cheerfully holding on to Sunday's hand, skipping up and down the sidewalk, his laughter ringing out over the streets as Sunday's smile lit up her entire face. He had several memories like that, times when he'd seen Sunday looking so happy that he'd almost approached her. Perhaps it was just fear, but he didn't want to approach her and be rebuffed, because that felt like it was a final thing. 
He'd spent so much of his time thinking about Sunday and wanting to be with her that if he had been rejected, he wasn't sure exactly what he would do. He didn't want to face the reality that Sunday would never be his. He just started to move away from the casket when sudden movement out of the corner of his eye made him freeze. And then a woman screamed profanity made him turn. The woman was Sunday. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.